Thank you. Thank you very much. So it was a difficult talk that uh, Jeff asked me to do because usually I talk in a conference where all, all people da do is uh, talking and I just talk as well and it's easy. In this, ca in this case, we are actually people building stuff, very cool stuff. So uh, I, I'm not able to build stuff. So the only thing I can do is talking. Uh, we, we decided to put the talk at the end after two days of actual projects and demo and cool stuff, you will be completely tired of uh, actual builders and you will want some philosophical take. So I will try to, I mean, just to relax a little bit your brain after all this doing. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, and uh, the, the, the title of this talk is, uh, oh, that doesn't go anymore. Well, I use this, not many slides. Uh, it's uh, how I learned to stop worrying a lot the lightning. Uh, of course, uh, some people ask me, th this was Jeff's idea actually, the, the title. Some people ask me uh, why I didn't love the lightning before. I always did, of course, since the beginning. This is a, this is a reference to the famous uh, Kubrick movie. And uh, the idea is to use this sentence to frame a, a difference between a typical approach that we are developing and we have to develop in the usual Bitcoin protocol uh, protocol development, protocol integration uh, environment, which is completely different somehow in, uh, in Lightning. Uh, I don't know how many of you were around in conferences, in Bitcoin conferences, tec te technical Bitcoin conferences back in 2013, 2014. In 2013, I was a shitcoiner, but I was uh, anyway uh, sometimes visiting some Bitcoin uh, conference, uh, technical Bitcoin meetup or conference as well. And the mood, the, the expectation, the general feeling was quite different than today. Uh, it was more about uh, doing new stuff, experimenting, trying, and uh, that had to change a little bit. In Bitcoin, at least at the protocol level, if you go now to visit a Bitcoin core development meetup, uh, you cannot have that kind of vibe anymore for very good reason. Uh, Bitcoin uh, is basically a revolution what, uh, where at stake there is uh, the future of money. We cannot really move fast and break things. Uh, we need to be conservative, we need to be critical, we need to be adversarial, we need to be absolutely skeptical about uh, new things. We, we, we need to move uh, slowly, safely, responsibly. We cannot be reckless. Uh, one interesting thing is that if you go to uh, Lightning Network uh, uh, focused uh, technical events like, uh, like this, you can actually feel again the shift back to the, to the reckless ideal, which is also a hashtag uh, right now and a, and a nice hat. Uh, why can we be reckless finally again? And why uh, the usual mood, the usual vibe of, the, of a Bitcoin developing ecosystem in which you have, first of all, to be safe uh, is not applying anymore. So I was thinking about that. Uh, of course, uh, some people really like uh, working all, time, uh, all the time on critical, safety critical, mission critical uh, protocols and, and software. But it's also fun sometimes to, to be able to experiment, to fail fast, uh, to uh, technically speaking, fuck up. And uh, it's nice to have this kind of uh, vibe again. Also because this is the kind of vibe that some scam coins are marketing and uh, leveraging a lot in order to attract the kind of developers that maybe want to have fun with uh, new experiments, but they cannot right now learn uh, everything you can learn about game theory and uh, uh, apply cryptography and, uh, and cyber security and stuff like that. So this is the typical uh, let's say spectrum in which uh, Bitcoin is uh, right now the base layer is something uh, sacred, something critical that we have to protect uh, before everything. And then we have finally a playground we can, where we can start to get, uh, uh, to get reckless again. Uh, I was thinking about this and I realized that this is actually um, just a little part of a general dynamic that you have in society in general, in tools in general, and in software, and in protocols in particular, which is basically this, uh, this dynamic between, uh, between two extremes. Uh, everything in life, in society, in technology, is kind of uh, made of layers. You have uh, good technology that you can use in order to implement other good technologies on top, 
and then you have use cases on top. And uh, if you want to, uh, to try to imagine a spectrum, uh, a vertical spectrum in this kind of layerization, you have the, uh, the, the lowest point at the bottom where you have uh, infrastructure so you can produce a new car, like a new fancy Tesla, but you cannot easily replace the road system, right? Uh, there is the languages. Uh, you can create a new word or a new poetry to have fun, but if you create your own language every time, nobody will be able to understand you. Uh, standards and protocol. Uh, some things that have to be uh, uh, solid, uh, safe, sound, and, uh, and reliable. And then on the, other, uh, in, on the other side of the spectrum, on the other extreme, you have uh, products, services, commercial services, commercial products, uh, what uh, these days are called uh, apps or even just items inside specific uh, software apps. So uh, the typical example of uh, this layerization, we can have it starting, this is not super precise from a, a technological point of view, but just to give an idea, you have the internet protocol, so the, the normal IPv4 protocol, and usually in the stack, uh, I mean, we call the stack TCP IP, the whole internet stack is called TCP IP because we name two, the, uh, two of the most important, par important parts of the spec, uh, we, uh, the stack, which is the, the internet protocol itself and for example the TCP uh, layer on top and we call all these TCP IP but of course uh, the more you go the more you go up the more you have uh, a, pos a possible uh, a possibility to have different uh, competing protocols and you have protocols that can change faster let's let's try to go up again on top of TCP you have uh, for example HTTP but also FTP SMPT etc etc and on top of uh, HTTP you have for example Facebook but you can also have Twitter or Reddit and on top of Facebook you have uh, stupid games like Candy Crush and uh, th th this was coming to my mind yesterday because there is a Candy Crush uh, clone in the in the tournament and uh, but, but you have other like uh, Farm Heroes criminal case I just copied the the most famous Facebook game right now I know that you all deleted Facebook and you all deleted Coinbase it's okay delete Facebook delete Coinbase but this is just an example so uh, the, the the nice thing about this uh, uh, idealization of a stack is that uh, we usually think about uh, uh, you know, free market and technology and people interacting freely. There is this uh, misconception in which uh, where people interact freely, you have free market, you always have a lot of competition, a lot of fragmentation. I mean, uh, I am a toximalist, so I, I, only, I only study Bitcoin and the people say, you know, if you are for a free market, you want basically one coin for any person of this planet because otherwise that's not a free market. But the nice thing is that if you think about this layerization, you will see that uh, at the top level, you actually have as a typical product of a free market, uh, you have usually very fast evolution, very fragmented competition because anybody has different, uh, uh, different value functions, everybody wants different things. So you need different actors competing and proposing different solutions in order to satisfy all the demand. So you have a lot of people providing a lot of products and a lot of uh, services to a lot of different uh, market segments and you have a very fast uh, uh, and even disruptive evolution all the time. And uh, you have what is uh, typically called in, uh, in uh, Taliban, which is not the same of Taliban uh, circles, is called uh, anti-fragility or anti-fragility, which is basically the characteristic of the system itself to become stronger, the more single pieces of the system are actually destroyed and damaged and hurt. So you damage the single pieces and you make stronger the overall system. This is the typical outcome of the top layer of uh, social and technological stack. But this is actually not the typical outcome of free interaction at the bottom layer. What you find at the bottom layer is actually the, the actual opposite of that. Instead of evolution, you mostly have stability. A free market, when, it, when, it, when let free, at the base layer will try to maximize utility by uh, unifying languages, uh, road systems, uh, technology uh, protocols, uh, communication protocols, and especially, as we know, money. Money is a kind of, uh, is a typical economical game in which uh, the winner takes it all if it can. Uh, so when you have, uh, uh, when you have some kind of uh, 
manipulation of the market, some kind of, uh, uh, of uh, external entity altering the market, for example, with the use of force. Uh, in this case, in the, in the top part of, this, of the stack, you, you often find uh, legal monopolies. So an entity that tries to avoid competition and to concentrate uh, all the different solutions into some single moloch. Well, on this part of the, of the stack, when you have uh, the, 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 the manipulations and basically when you have uh, uh, pollute, pollution uh, by, uh, created by governments or, or force or other criminal organizations, other, yeah, well, government or other criminal organizations, uh, then you have, <laughs> basically you have, uh, uh, you have actually a more fragmentation that is needed. For example, you have several government imposing with legal standard different kind of monetary standards in a territory that maybe will be just okay with using one emergent monetary standards. For example, we had gold as an actual monetary standard for the basically all the civilization until a century ago. And then you need the active political manipulation, active, active political distortion in order to change that. So I think that we can make a very good uh, comparison with, uh, with Bitcoin. If we think about the Bitcoin protocol just as the internet protocol, uh, in, uh, I as internet and B as Bitcoin, uh, we can see that now uh, we see the first time in which uh, we are developing some kind of uh, uh, technological stack on top of the base stack. So uh, I really like this. Uh, I mean, there is some people who is trying to push for the for the meme uh, of using um, uh, BTC slash LN as a as a comparison with uh, TCP/IP. But I prefer uh, I like more uh, LNP slash BP because it's more symmetrical. You have the you know you have the base protocol, which is also giving the name to the entire stack. So when we see when we say internet. We, 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 we actually mean internet protocol IP and the whole internet stack. And the same when we say Bitcoin, we can mean the base protocol, the blockchain protocol, the actual Nakamoto protocol BP, and all the stake, uh, all the stack that, that is, uh, that is uh, layer, layerized on top of this. And uh, of course, uh, uh, just as uh, TCP is just the most important uh, upper layer of IP, but you also can have uh, uh, UDP, etc. cetera, uh, I suspect the Lightning Network as we know it right now is just the first and probably uh, at equilibrium most important, just like TCP, uh, layer on top of the Bitcoin-based protocol, but we can be probably uh, um, uh, compete and, and interoperate uh, uh, and be uh, basically and be uh, synergic with many, well, not many probably, but with uh, three, four, five other uh, second layer solutions. And then things that we still don't know actually, it's everything coming, uh, coming uh, above this. Uh, this is, I mean, uh, when, we're, when we're, you're building TCP, you know nothing about uh, Candy Crash yet. <laughs> it's, it's a long way to get uh, to get to the end of this uh, layerized spectrum. Uh, the one, one interesting thing is that uh, this is mostly about technological communication protocol, but we could even think, we could even think about a, an even lower uh, layer, uh, which is the a more, let's say, more abstract layer. Uh, when you have, uh, uh, when you have uh, the internet, when you finish to build the internet stack, you can have some kind of uh, content standard, standard of information. For example, thanks to the internet, we create uh, some standard uh, memes, uh, like the, you know, uh, I'm smart meme or, uh, or uh, frog, the Pepe the frog meme. And these memes uh, are interesting because they become standard and they, they can be so pervasive in society, they can even survive the technological platform itself. So you can even think about a, a future, I mean, this is very strange, but uh, uh, bear with me for a moment because I'm trying to translate that on Bitcoin. That we can imagine a future in which uh, the actual internet infrastructure based on IPv4 is completely abandoned, maybe for another infrastructure, uh, or maybe for a mesh network uh, uh, made by fractals of whatever. And uh, so we don't have IP anymore, but still some content that uh, became standard at a very low, uh, low cultural level because of this protocol can survive and just migrate to another protocol. And uh, this is something that we can uh, probably see in the future in the very far future with Bitcoin as well. Because if you think about that, uh, even if the base Bitcoin layer, which is not as 
easy to change for good reason as the upper layers is going to be eventually abandoned there is no reason uh, this is the typical altcoin fallacy if you build a new uh, digital gold infrastructure there is no reason to re bootstrap the digital gold asset again you can just move the digital gold asset uh, in your new infrastructure with many, I mean, uh, there is a side chain concept, there are many concepts for that. So the idea is that uh, there is a value standard, which is, uh, I put it on the side of the base layer, but in a way it's an, it's an even lower and deeper la layer, because you can have a change in technology which doesn't affect the change in uh, uh, value standardization. So uh, after all these uh, philosophical uh, mental wonking, uh, I, I, just, I, I understood better that uh, the difference between uh, uh, the, the mood in typical uh, base layer protocol development uh, circles and the mood in uh, typical Lightning Network uh, hack days is uh, mostly a consequence of, of this. So Lightning Network is not Candy Crash. You can use it to play Candy Crush, but it's not Candy Crush. It's still very, very low in the layerization scale. So we don't really need uh, 200 different Lightning Networks changing a uh, standard every minute. We still need standards. We still need uh, some kind of convergence. So it's still a base layer technology, still an infrastructure layer technology, but less so than typical Bitcoin layer one. So it's, uh, it's uh, higher. In the, in the hierarchy of layerization. And so uh, if uh, in Bitcoin we have to uh, especially be careful of uh, avoiding unwanted changes, avoiding changes that produce some kind of systemic risk, some kind of long-term risk, if we have to be super conservative and if we have to be even toxic because of that, I mean, everybody proposing something on Bitcoin must be hated for, for five minutes for at least because it's dangerous to, to change things in, in Bitcoin. You cannot move fast, you cannot break things. We, we, may, uh, we may very well have just one shot at this. If not one, maybe one if, uh, in our lifetime. So if we mess up with Bitcoin, it's not automatically, it's not mathematically certain that we can have other shots with the same kind of very lucky circumstances as, as, as uh, Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008, uh, from, from different points of view. So uh, this is not the only difference between uh, a, a layer one conference or mood or vibe and the uh, and layer two uh, mood or vibe. I mean, uh, it's incredible if you think that uh, the same people, uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's think about when you were explaining Bitcoin to your friends. At the beginning, they were coming to you thinking about some new cool technology where they could just experiment with stuff. And then you had to uh, basically to disappoint them and to tell them, no, I mean, you cannot do that. Uh, you had to spend a lot of time explaining why you cannot do anything which comes to your mind. There are serial limitations. There are also security risks. I mean, can I do some kind of uh, smart contract multi-sig with two oracles and uh, one check sequence verify in order to... Yes, you can, but you're going to lose your money. So please don't. Use something safe, something standard, some, some best practice procedure. Don't experiment too much. Uh, this, uh, the same people we explained that to our friends for years, now can finally go to the same friends and say, uh, you know, take uh, $5 equivalent of Bitcoin and put, put them here in this uh, strange, uh, in this strange like uh, uh, super big uh, uh, receiving channel on your mobile, which may well crash and, and lose your money forever, but it's okay because uh, we are just experimenting. So the characteristic uh, that, uh, that may, may make possible this difference are mostly uh, the amounts involved. Lightning Network is conceived for very small amounts for very fast and, uh, uh, and frequent payments. So in this context, uh, the danger of centralization, the danger, for example, of a central counterparty getting a lot of uh, saying in funds is, uh, I mean, it is a danger, but it's not so, so big. So the danger of, uh, uh, of shooting you in the foot and losing money with a channel of uh, a few uh, dollar, a few dollars of uh, equivalent satoshis is not a big deal. Also, so amounts and amounts limitation 
even if now beat refill and um, and Eclair are going reckless with the super big uh, channels, but I mean, they are right to do so. Uh, but usually the amount limitation in a channel is already a protection from uh, our stupidity. So we can experiment more. And the second protection is that uh, Lightning Network as a technology doesn't rely very much or at all uh, on global consensus. You don't need to upgrade any so, uh, every single node in the system in order to use a new feature uh, it's better if we all if we are all bolt compliant because we can interact better we have better network effects but if we are not that's still fine we are not destroying the value of the network by creating any alternative we are not basically damaging anybody in trying something different we can be uh, oh, we, uh, reckless we can be uh, bolt compliant and uh, or or not maybe and it still makes sense we can uh, inside the bolt specification we have a lot of room for different uh, features uh, uh, you, we can have a, a smaller set of feature a bigger set of feature so you can basically experiment without the problem of global consensus you don't need everybody to agree with your with your new innovation so if you mess up you mess up alone or with your friend uh, with your reckless friends uh, in, in base layer, that's not the case. If you mess up uh, there, that's a systemic risk, that's a systemic pro problem. Uh, safe versus reckless is not, if you think about that, is not the only cultural shift that we are witnessing uh, in, in typical Lightning Network Center conferences. The reason, there, there are others. For example, there is, a, uh, well, this is, this is quite similar, but uh, uh, this is more about uh, uh, evolution. We can change things very fast while uh, in this case. So reckless and safe is more about how much money do you put at risk. While in this case, disrupting versus protecting is more how fast do you go in innovation. But then there is, for example, also competing versus converging. Uh, in, in Bitcoin, you need to be uh, you need to reach a standard. Uh, every time you don't, you create confusion, not just in, uh, not just the protocol rules of uh, value transaction. That's the most important part. But think also about uh, uh, wallet seed standardization. If you have two wallet pr pr producers and they don't agree about C, seed uh, mnemonic serializa serialization, so that's okay. Bitcoin still works because it's not a consensus rule. But it can get messy and people can lose money if one uh, mnemonic is not recognized by the others and you don't know which wallet you use to create which one. Uh, Multi-sig script, for example, uh, if everybody creates a, a P2SH script with different uh, uh, strategies or different, without a deterministic uh, uh, procedure, then maybe you have the, the, your private key, but you don't know how to rebuild this, the, uh, you have your seed, but you don't know how to rebuild deterministically the script unless your wallet is somehow compatible as standard. So in Bitcoin, you have to converge over standard. While, as I said, in Lightning, you can compete. You can compete not just from an intellectual point of view, like uh, let's try different stuff, but also finally from a business point of view. There was a very nice article by John Carvalho of Bitrefill about this. You can find it easily. I think it was, I think, on Medium or something. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, he was uh, uh, making the point then uh, the kind of uh, 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 the kind of co uh, cooperation, the uh, free non-profit uh, uh, open source operation that uh, you can find in Bitcoin base layer is not exactly the same in, in Lightning Network environment where you can have some more friendly but, aggre but commercially aggressive competition. You can have uh, uh, many Lightning implementation, you can have many different use of Lightning rules, and you can have special features, maybe even competing features. You can have more disagreement and more competition. Uh, because uh, with, with, uh, before I say that like, anti-fragility is on top and, and robustness is on, 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 on the bottom. Uh, we like to say that Bitcoin is anti-fragile. Bitcoin as a base layer is not actually. It's not anti-fragile. It's not a complex system where if you destroy many parts of the system as a protocol, then the system becomes, becomes stronger. The base level of Bitcoin, like the 21 million uh, uh, cap, the hashing power, they are robo robust system. It's very difficult to hurt them, but uh, uh, it's, I mean, they have to resist uh, attack. They have to uh, avoid the changing when they are under pressure and under attack. While the upper layer, they are really anti-fragile. You can have uh, six uh, lighting implementations. 
If uh, five of them fail, that's fine. We lose some money, we lose some reputation, we, uh, we are sad for a while, and then we go on with the other implementation. If you destroy the Bitcoin base layer, you destroy probably the monetary function of Bitcoin for good for we don't know how many years. So, uh, again, <laughs> I have to be faster. This is a signal that I have to be faster. So, uh, another uh, typical trade-off is, uh, this is also very funny, spending versus ordering. So, we spend all this time uh, uh, getting mad at people, we were, uh, we were emphasizing too much the spending aspect of Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is still in the monetization phase, so mostly we hold. If you want to spend, spend your dirty fiat, don't spend Bitcoin, save Bitcoin and spend fiat, uh, unless you are Bitcoin only, in that case you can. Uh, but now, finally, we are in a place where I'm spending a little bit fraction of Bitcoin since today, basically, for things that, I mean, they are fine, but probably I could easily find the fiat counterparties somewhere close. And uh, I mean, uh, now there are games, uh, beautiful games on Lightning Network. I remember, I don't know if it's still around, probably yes, this game in which basically you had something like uh, Super Mario Bros or similar, but in order to give any single command, you had to pay. So for any, for any stroke of the keyboard, which is kind of crazy if you think about that. I mean, this is completely opposite of our rhetoric about always holding. Why that? Because uh, we are talking about very small amounts. Sure, one Satoshi spent today is probably a, a, a big uh, home for, your, for the nephews of your grandchildren. Yeah, so, so, I mean, <laughs> sorry for their loss, but right now we are having fun and we are having coffee. So uh, at least, I mean, we, we, we should feel bad spending to Satoshi, but not so bad. We can still do that just for fun. So there is a difference between the spending mantra and the, and the hodling mantra. And, uh, and the last one that I'm going to uh, analyze here, I know that they may seem a little bit redundant, but they're not, is focusing against exploring. Uh, this is especially true, for example, about uh, uh, very articulate complex contracts or maybe stuff like assets. So last year, uh, last uh, Lighting uh, Hack Days, uh, uh, with Alecos, we were uh, presenting the RGB idea. So an idea to take uh, something similar to correct coins concept in Bitcoin, but to do that uh, uh, on, on the Lightning Network. Right now, there are some people from many companies, from Bitrefill to Bitfinex, uh, uh, putting, uh, uh, I mean, uh, paid developers on top of this idea in order to try to deliver something on this uh, protocol. So asset uh, over Lightning Networks. There were also very old the proof of concept like uh, Colu plus, uh, plus LND, I, I think it was uh, back then, uh, probably two years ago. So uh, when you talk about a, a, some, some knowledgeable Bitcoiner about assets, uh, they think about assets on the base layer and they, and they have a very skeptical face because they know that you have a complex trade. Uh, you know that basically on the base layer, if the privacy of Bitcoin is bad, a privacy, because of on-chain analysis, a privacy of an asset is even worse because now you have uh, the same problem with chain analysis but with a, a way smaller anonymity set. If uh, scalability is bad for Bitcoin, for assets, is uh, for correct coins or counterpart, your Omni, that's even worse because now you cannot even do pseudo SPV because uh, miners are not enforcing the, the, the asset rules. So everything which is bad in Bitcoin on-chain is even worse for assets. And also there is the, the problem of, uh, uh, of, generally speaking, don't mess up with financial incentives in Bitcoin. While uh, you can notice that right now that we are moving to upper layer, so uh, Lightning Network, we can finally discuss more freely. I mean, when I talk about RGB, people still think that I'm a scammer, but they, I mean, they don't voice it, they don't voice it too much. They, they, are, they are less loud because they don't throw me object, I mean, not yet. You can, but, uh, but not yet. Uh, also, you can think about other kind of layers like liquid layer. Uh, liquid is maybe, uh, it's a side chain, so it's a little bit on the side, but still we can consider that an upper layer since uh, it uh, falls back, it, uh, it piggybacks and leverages and, and fall backs on the Bitcoin uh, main uh, base layer network. Okay, but I'm mostly finished, so, uh, so it's okay. Okay, uh, so exploring means that we can, uh, we can experiment with uh, 
later after my talk there will be an auction done uh, by Alecos directly on Lightning Network using the uh, Lightning plugin system and you can uh, read, read stuff about uh, discrete log contracts by Tajdria. You, you, can, uh, you can read a lot of complex smart contract solution on top of Lightning Network in a way that was not possible or, 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 uh, or sustainable on the base layer. And uh, you can talk about assets and stuff that uh, we were not talking anymore about uh, on the base layer. Uh, last slide, this is like the nausea slide. Uh, I, I rotated the screen for, for anybody of you who missed that. See, very cool. I am rotating the screen because there are other differences that are, that are very important to remember, but they are orthogonal to my discussion about layers. So since they are orthogonal, I rotated the screen. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are bags for vomit under your chairs if you, <laughs> if you feel like that. So the, the first uh, trade-off orthogonal to, to uh, my discussion today uh, is uh, a, a switch in the, in the constraints between block space uh, priority constraint the problem for which you have to have very good fee estimation. You have to, uh, you cannot have uh, uh, instant ATMs. I mean, if you go to an on-chain ATM and you want your chocolate fiat, you put your cash the, uh, and, well, no, you, you put your bitcoins and you cannot have your chocolate fiat because uh, the ATM cannot know that you are not going to double spend. So on-chain layer one is not good for retail payment, except, especially for fast thing. We have a lot of limitation about block space priority. Eventually we can go in the first block, but we have, anyway we have to wait for the next block or the next blocks. We can enter, but we have to pay more to enter, especially if there is a lot of demand for block space. In Lightning, we don't have this kind of problematic anymore. This constraint in Lightning is completely disappeared, but a new kind of constraint has emerged, which is completely different, and we didn't have that in typical layer one situation in use case, which is the liquidity constraint, uh, the liquidity constraints. So now in Lightning Network, we have to we, or uh, uh, hopefully in the future our wallet, have to be concerned about uh, liquidity. Do we have enough? Uh, I mean, the typical case was the reason that uh, everybody is still mocking me, because after, after ranting on some podcast about uh, uh, fiduciary lighting wallet and how bad our fiduciary uh, lighting wallet, I finally had to pass over the lightning torch by Odelnaut, and then all, all, all my channel were not big enough. And so uh, I say, okay, nobody will see that. I installed Wallet of Satoshi, which provided me immediate uh, liquidity because it was a centralized custodial service. And I passed the torch over, it was night, I was tired. And so everybody is still, oh, I know that somebody is using Fiduciary Wallet uh, because everybody can see that. I mean, it's on the internet forever. Fuck. Uh, so uh, basically what, uh, what we have is uh, a liquidity uh, problem. Uh, and now all our applications and use case have to face uh, uh, liquidity constraints and uh, to manage liquidity constraints. This is new. This is not something we, we had in, in base layer. So we, uh, we had a lot of chain privacy concerns in Bitcoin base layer, in BP, in layer one, uh, because uh, you have these uh, chain analysis uh, adversarials trying to spy on people and try to uh, expose and de-anonymize people. Uh, Lightning finally can uh, hopefully um, uh, put these companies out of business or maybe they can pivot or something else, open a pizza shop or whatever. Uh, but uh, finally they cannot do a reliable chain analysis anymore with Lightning. But there is a new problem that we, that we didn't have with, uh, with uh, uh, layer one, which is network privacy concerns. So right now everybody has, a, a, I mean, uh, how many of you have a running uh, Lightning node on Tor? Well, way, way better than expected, but still less than half. So I have to assume that the other half has, is basically putting their IP connected with, uh, uh, with the Lightning nodes, telling everybody how much money they are uh, sharing with, uh, with, uh, with anybody. I mean, uh, this is, this is uh, from a chain analysis point of view, this is way better than, than, than uh, the layer one. But from a network privacy point of view, when you broadcast a Bitcoin transaction, Nobody really knows where it's coming from. People can try to triangle it with, uh, uh, with uh, broadcasting uh, uh, timing uh, attacks, but actually it's super easy to rely, to, to, to mask that. Uh, while in light network, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty difficult to do because uh, now you actually have to 
focus on hiding your, basically at least you have to use Tor. Which is nice because Tor also has a, a very good uh, plausible deniability feature. Uh, Tor is needed when you want an easy way to have uh, uh, static, uh, static addresses. For example, if you use uh, a wallet uh, app as a remote control for your node, uh, for your node uh, uh, at home, then it's nice to have a, a static uh, onion address instead of IP. You, you have less concern, I mean, configuration of router, et cetera. So uh, if somebody asks, you're not doing that for privacy. You're doing that for strict, uh, I mean, uh, usability concerns. Uh, so uh, we have less of these, but we have more of these. And people building on Lightning will have to start thinking seriously about that and, and how to not uh, bring uh, uh, users to uh, abuse their, uh, their, their privacy online in Bitcoin related privacy. And then we have, the, we have less of the initial sync friction. Uh, when you have to sync a Bitcoin node, that's a problem. It's a problem of bandwidth, it's a problem of CPU usage. You can mitigate with assume valid, but you are somehow trusting. So there are a lot of very difficult trade offs you have to face. While these trade offs basically don't exist in Lightning, uh, once you have your Bitcoin node full in sync, the Lightning node is, uh, d d doesn't have all these kind of uh, uh, oppressive constraints. But we have another kind of friction, which is the always online friction, which is the friction of, uh, of um, uh, real-time synchronous communication with your counterparty. Which, by the way, is not a terrible thing to, to have to face, because eventually all layer system needs some, some level of, uh, of uh, uh, basically, of uh, synchronous uh, uh, back and forth. But uh, it's, it's difficult to manage. I mean, we have to think about uh, watchtowers. We have to think about uh, uh, we, we have to think about a lot of things. When you open right now the Eclair wallet, you have the minimal friction of the Eclair in needed needing to sync with uh, with uh, I mean, uh, you have some kind of friction in that regard. It's good to have it because the Bitcoin development direction in general is going toward more and more interactivity uh, to obtain better privacy and better scalability. Think about uh, scriptless script, you will have to interact with other wallet in order to think about CoinJoin or uh, Schnorr signature aggregation with CoinJoin. You will have more and more to interact real time with other online counterparty. The RGB protocol, uh, it's, it's, in, uh, it's arguably better than correct coin because you don't have to write on chain the metadata of the asset, you are, uh, not even the, the proof of passage of the asset. You only use the blockchain to avoidable spending and you pass over the, oh, everything else peer-to-peer -peer directly to the other party, which is the same thing you have to do uh, in Lightning Network and uh, when, you, when you pass uh, around the, the channel state update. So this is a, a risk, uh, this is an annoying thing, but it's also an opportunity because now we have to manage a, a synchronous, synchronous uh, uh, interactive uh, uh, interaction. So let's leverage that for good and let's think about stuff like uh, uh, script to script and uh, composing transaction together and uh, mixing with, uh, with uh, uh, coin join, et cetera. Uh, so this is the end and uh, I hope that uh, uh, we will get to a point where uh, uh, even upper layers uh, will be available and we will have to, right now Bitcoin development is still rightfully so, perceived as something very difficult to, to enter in for a new developer because uh, it's something mission critical, something safety critical. You have to know about uh, cryptography at a very deep level, level cyber, cyber security. Uh, with Lightning there is more, uh, I mean, uh, the, the reason that right now uh, I'm not toxic and I'm starting my presentation with the, the hard sign is that in this con context we can be less toxic and we can mess up and we can try out and we can be wrong uh, with less consequences. Uh, upper layer will come. Uh, uh, we can argue that uh, applications on top of Lightning Network uh, already are uh, some kind of uh, third or fourth layer. Uh, there are crazy ideas about that. Uh, and but but I mean they are science fiction, but they are fine. For example, uh, we were discussing with some guys this idea that uh, Lightning Network is uh, in a way an incentivized message passer system. In order to pay, you have to pass around messages, and you have to pay 
to route your, your payload, which is containing an encrypted message. So uh, what about Lightning Network as the base of a general purpose message passing system? Probably it doesn't, I mean, it will not work, but you can think about, and, and then on top of that, what about leveraging that kind of generic purpose message passing system in order to create a decentralized storage uh, protocol like uh, Torrent or IPFS, but better? Uh, what about creating on top some kind of uh, word computer? Okay, okay, I'll stop here because <laughs> this is getting dangerous. Uh, you, can, you can buy my token later in, uh, in, the, in the bathroom. And um, <laughs> so we can be reckless and we can experiment and we can be wrong and we can mess up and that's beautiful. Thank you. By uh, official protocol bodies. So I don't know. I, uh, so the answer, the, the question is about uh, um, international, uh, we're talking about standardization. Are international uh, regulatory standard bodies uh, involved in this standardization process? Uh, I, I'm, I don't have a, a deep knowledge. My knowledge is, uh, is, uh, is uh, basically limited to an interaction I personally had, uh, it was kind of two years ago. I was participating to these uh, uh, meetings about blockchain standards, uh, starting from uh, Switzerland and then expanding to a conference in Sydney somehow. And it was like uh, the, uh, the W3C guys plus other standard, standard bodies. And my perception was that these guys were completely uh, out of, I mean, they were, they were completely clueless. Uh, unfortunately, not just clueless, because clueless means that you don't have a clue, uh, but they had a lot of wrong clues. Uh, they, they were a victim of a lot of noise from the private blockchain snake oil industry, and, uh, and, and later on even from the crypto, cryptocurrency industry. So uh, from both sides, you know, there are separate sides. From one side, you have the super institutional guys. They are pushing for uh, tokenless blockchain as a purely non-financial but procedural innovation, which is bullshit. And then you have the cryptocurrency guy who, who want to tokenize everything and to create the incentives mechanism for everything. And this is uh, also bullshit. So uh, you have the c conjoint attack of these two uh, craziness. Uh, two kinds of craziness, and these uh, people trying to find standards are mostly victim of this uh, this amount of noise. Not not all of them are bad people, but they they really they they cannot understand what's going on. So I'm skeptical about that. The nice thing is that uh, uh, my comparison was with the internet, and uh, you may know about the history of the internet protocol standardization, but it's pretty funny because uh, the internet developed in a pretty much organic way. First the military, then universities, and then so on and so on. And at a certain point, the regulatory standard bodies, they started to step in and they said, uh, I mean, what is this anarchy? Uh, we will set a, a standard, it's uh, ISO OSI, and we will create the ISO OSI standard replacing the TCP IP stack. And the answer uh, of the market was, uh, thank you, but no. We, we have a standard, it's working. Thank you, bureaucrats, for coming late and try to uh, teach us how to standardize things, but the market already provided the standard. And uh, I think this will be similar. Uh, probably the market will create standards because we need standards, especially at base layer. Uh, it will, it will create a lot of fragmentation and competition and top layers, but a lot of standardization, uh, spontaneous standardization at lower level. And the bureaucrats will come later and will first try to change it, and then they will just uh, note it uh, and they will have to accept it. Uh, I think that there are some people in the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem, like uh, uh, especially like Christopher Allen, uh, tried a lot of effort in order to create uh, a, a W3C-like uh, body. Uh, it's, I mean, it's fine. These kind of efforts are fine. Uh, they are very difficult, though. Other questions? Maybe about my ICO in the back. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any maybe very vague understanding or idea of how level three protocols may look like on top of say Lightning? Um, uh, so the qu the question is, uh, 
what these uh, layer three protocols may look like. Uh, I think one example was the, the one I gave before. You can create some kind, you can, I mean, uh, la layerization means that you use the fundamental structure of uh, the Lightning Network in order to abstract something else. So you have uh, Lightning Network things going on, so you have uh, peers passing by, uh, passing by encrypted payloads uh, containing some kind of content, uh, and uh, they pay each other in order to route it. Uh, the, the, the purpose of that is just payment. So uh, on one side of the, of the interaction, you have some guy, Alice, that want to pay Bob. But what if the content itself, instead of just uh, moving around the, uh, the, um, the, the secret of the HTLC, is, is actually moving around something else, and an upper layer of abstraction can actually uh, interpret that as some kind of encrypted passage, uh, encrypted uh, message passaging uh, protocol, or, st or proof of storage, or stuff like that. So again, my SEO. Or uh, maybe if you think about, uh, uh, for example, escrows, uh, you have a two of three lightning channel where you can have a channel state update between the parties, but you also have a third signature by some kind of oracle to do some kind of crazy stuff. Uh, or maybe the oracle is the one playing with the, with the H, H, HTLC, uh, releasing it uh, depending on some condition. Or maybe you have the DLC construct with the Schnorr. So all this kind of stuff, in a way, can be abstracted away in an upper layer of uh, things that are not different from the Lightning Network. They are still the Lightning Network, but they are the Lightning Network used in a way which creates much more complexity at the upper layer. So something like that, I guess. Escrows, oracles, uh, uh, complex payment conditions, plus assets. I mean, RGB is arguably a layer, a layer three system, layer three protocol. It's not entirely true because it also works on chain eventually, but it, it, it works better. The, the reason of the, of the design is that it works better on, uh, off chain. So uh, you can say the DLC and RGB are already la layer two protocols. So of course, the, the, the division, the topology is not strict. You can, you can play around a lot. Uh, my, my example doesn't work, for example, if you go over the typical internet stack and you go, uh, you go below at uh, IP, uh, so you have uh, HTTP, TCP, IP, you go below and you have the physical connection. The physical connection in a way is less standard than TCP. Uh, everybody uses TCP IP, but we use uh, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, uh, and uh, Ether connection. So the, the physical layer somehow is, uh, is an upper layer from the point of view of evolution and competition uh, than the IP layer. So this is not, a, I mean, uh, th this is uh, as perfect as uh, I, I could get, which is quite perfect, but not totally perfect. <laughs> so, uh, while you think to the next uh, questions, if we still have some minutes, uh, Alicus, do you already want to maybe announce the... Uh... Okay, so, uh, uh, come to... <laughs> okay, so I, I uh, unfortunately I spent all my entertainment capability during the presentation. So uh, now you know it's, it's becoming kind of uh, difficult because uh, at the beginning uh, I was trying to be taken seriously, and uh, and everybody was laughing when I was giving a presentation. Now everybody approached me before the presentation, uh, waiting for jokes in the presentation. So it's becoming very stressful. Like uh, I, I'm a Bitcoin comedian right now, and uh, is, I mean I, this was was not funny, I know, but uh, I cannot come out with a lot of jokes. I, uh, it's especially if we have to, if I have to talk about serious stuff. If I have to talk about shitcoins, then a lot of, I have a lot of jokes about that, those. But this is serious stuff, so no. So other questions while uh, Alekos is setting up? When are you gonna, uh, Dragon Ball, when are you gonna give Finn a call back the hug? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first step toward this, uh, this uh, very important moment has been already accomplished yesterday. Um, after um, the podcast uh, with uh, Lawrence Naum and Udi uh, Verdmeier, we created the, the persona of uh, Pedro McCormack, which is the second version of uh, Peter McCormack. And uh, some uh, friend uh, created a t-shirt about that. They are very funny, like uh, I googled Pedro McCormack and the only thing I could get is this t-shirt with the same graphic and the same font of what Bitcoin did. So it is very funny and I gave it to Peter yesterday. So that's already basically a, 
I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm weak, I'm socially weak, I'm, I'm, uh, I, f I forgive, I forget. Uh, so maybe tonight, I don't know. Uh, we, will, uh, we will live blog any hug eventually. Yeah.